Well, it has been a year of so much loss. And as we reflect on that minute silence and the memories and the sorrows of lockdown, let's speak to the BBC presenter and vicar of Findon, the Reverend Richard Coles. He lost his sister-in-law, sister Louise, over the last year. She died of coronavirus. That was just months after his partner, David, passed away following a long illness. Thank you for joining us. I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, and as I said, it's been a, a year of loss for so many in circumstances we just couldn't even imagine. What impact would you say it has had for people to have to grieve in the way that they have had to without the, the normal comforts of loved ones and often in many circumstances, situations unable to, to properly say goodbye? It's made a tough year even tougher, I think. Uh, to be bereaved is, uh, is a difficult thing to take at any time. Mm. But when you're unable to come together to uh, get the support of those closest and dearest to you, even harder. And when the funerals we've been able to offer have been a very kind of pared down version of what we'd normally do. I think that's, that's been very, very tough for people. And my hope is that as we emerge from this, that we'll be able to offer a chance to come together and to celebrate the memory of those people who've died and, and that's affected so many people. What has it been like in your church? What have you been able to offer? Well, um, of course, the, church, the building has been closed for most of the year, although we were open for a brief period. Um, so we've gone online, we're now available via Zoom. But also we've been very supportive of the community. So we've mobilized people all around the community to ensure that there's um, a named person with a phone number that anyone in any household can call if they needed support with shopping or prescriptions or simply someone to talk to. We've had counselors who've been available too. So we've been able to provide that kind of support. And we've been able to connect with people through technology, but nothing I think compares with actually coming together in real space as a community and that's what we're all really looking forward to doing and I think until we do that until we're able to come together in real space I don't think we'll begin to really process what this year has actually done to people that's going to take a bit of time. Mm. Um, one of the things that became clear over the year was that people feeling in many cases that their loved ones had gone and because there hadn't been the possibility for a proper goodbye a proper funeral it was almost like it you know, it wasn't marked properly. So today we have this day of coming together, of remembering. How important do you think that is? I think it's really important. Uh, it, it, on the in the first place, because I think it's just an important marker uh, at the end of this really awful year to give us a chance to reflect on what's happened to us and how that's changed us and also to think about how we look forward but also i think you know lots of peer, uh, grief is a sort of lockdown in itself and so many people have had that compounded by the real lockdown that i think it's just i think it just reminds us that this is something that we've not just suffered individually but we've suffered as a society as a nation in fact so a national opportunity to market i think again is is really important you've written a book, um, Grief, a memoir of, uh, The Madness of Grief, a memoir of love and loss. What is, how, how have you processed what you have been through? Well, it's a really interesting one for a vicar, of course. I spend mm. a lot of my working life standing next to people who've been bereaved and walking with them part of that tough journey. It's completely different when it's you, of course. Um, and I. I call the book The Madness of Grief because it is a kind of madness that afflicts you, I think. Um, it's like a bomb goes off or a depth charge goes off and all kinds of stuff comes up to the surface. And although you function because you have to and you stand up and you face forward because you have to, actually, uh, it's a very difficult thing to deal with. You don't deal with it, it deals with you. And I think that's something that's got a national significance too. I think it's going to take us some time before we figure out quite what this past year has done to us. So we need some time to reflect, I think, and then work out a suitable way of remembering it and, uh, and owning it. It's going to take time to process. It's going to take time to show how, whether our society has changed. What are your, your thoughts on wh how we might have changed on the basis of, of what you see now? Well, I think for lots of people, it's, you know, our Victorian forebears, we sort of laugh about them and their kind of elaborate paraphernalia of mourning, you know, sort of a year's full mourning and all that. But I think they knew something that we don't know. We have medicalised death. We've exported it to the edges of our experience. And yet it is the one thing that we will all share. I think that's one of the lessons we've relearned perhaps in this year. Very few people have been untouched by bereavement, I think. Um, 
and also I think I think it's something I think it just reminds us of I mean like lots of people I've been in, in solitary confinement practically for large chunks of the year this just really reminded me how much I rely on other people mm. not just for all the obvious things but for all the unobvious things too my sense of myself how I fit into the community what the point of me is so as we recover I think to uh, to reconnect with each other and to reaffirm the bonds of community that are so important and so easily eroded I think that would be a really good positive thing to come out of what's been a, a dreadful experience we probably have to be kind to ourselves and others as we navigate it. Yeah, I remember sort of. I remember once someone getting impatient with somebody in a hospital car park, and of course I realised that it doesn't do to do that because that person might be having the worst day of their life. Lots of people will have had the worst days of their life in this past year, so it behoves us to be uh, as kind and respectful as we can, and also kind and respectful to ourselves. Reverend Richard Coles, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.